Welcome to this week's episode of the Prep Athletics Podcast. Today we are joined by Western Reserve coach Matt Garvey. Matt did a postgrad year at New Hampton School before being a manager at Providence College under Coach Ed Cooley, and then he worked there as a special assistant in the video department. Now, from there, he went to Western Reserve Academy under Coach Peach, Pete Hutchins, uh, and there are trying to build a powerhouse outside of Cleveland, Ohio. So, in this podcast, we talk about his experience at the D1 level, what it's like to coach at the prep school level, um, and some you know differences of Western Reserve being in Ohio versus New England, and the pros and cons of that. So, great conversation with Matt. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the podcast. Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe, maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh, yes, yeah, somebody wants me. Matt, welcome to the podcast. Corey, thanks for having me. No, it's a pleasure to have you on here finally. And, um, you went to New Hampton School for high school, and walk me through your process of what what got you thinking about prep schools, and why did you end up picking New Hampton? Yeah, great question. I, uh, you know, I grew up about two hours um, south of New Hampton, um, just outside of Boston, um, where obviously there's you know what feels like a prep school every uh, every other town in New England. And uh, I went to a small Catholic high school just outside of Boston. Um, after four years there, my family and I sat down, um, just didn't think I was, you know, completely ready to make the jump to college. A um, bunch of different reasons, you know, just personally, socially, uh, in terms of academics. So um, we looked up in New England. Um, we looked at New Hampton, Brewster, Tilton, Kimball Union, Bridgeton. Um, and just settled on narrowing it down. I knew a couple of people that had already gone to New Hampton um, that I was close with. It came highly recommended, and uh, that's what we had settled on. Gotcha. And how was your experience there? It was unbelievable. I uh, I tell people all the time I, I would not be where I am today without the one year I spent in New Hampton. Gotcha. And then after New Hampton, what did you do? I went on and uh, I was at Providence College. Uh, I studied economics there and I was a four-year manager there um, under Ed Cooley. Okay. What are the pros and cons of being a manager at a Big East team under Ed Cooley? Um, I would say the pros are absolutely, you know, the access, the uh, experience you get every day being around, you know, some of the best athletes um, in college sports. The gear obviously is a, uh, is a perk when you're an 18 to 20 year old kid. Um, and then just being able to learn under, you know, such an incredible staff, um, from, you know, the director of basketball ops to the assistant coaches, to, you know, coach Cooley himself and building those relationships. Um, that's a unique experience with that staff, just being so open and welcoming, um, and him only being in his first, in his second year there. Um, when I arrived, it was, uh, it was like the perfect storm for me and, uh, building that relationship with those guys and getting that type of experience. Yeah. What's the worst part of being a manager? Um, you know, it's a thankless job at times. Um, you know, you, you, like any job, you know, you start out doing the grunt work and whatnot. And then as, uh, as you grow and they, uh, build trust in you, you get to do the fun stuff, but, um, you know, it's just, it's long hours, thankless hours, but, uh, you see the reward at the end. And did you guys play manager games against other teams, management, manager squads? We did it. Uh, I remember my freshman year was uh, a growing thing. And by, uh, by my senior year, we were playing in, uh, in Madison Square Garden on uh, on Tuesday night, which was uh, which was pretty neat. So explain the manager games to people that might not know what that is. So typically, the head manager, or one of the senior managers, they all have a text chain going, um, just communicating about different things, shoot around times, um, locker room access. But the big thing is, hey, we're coming to Creighton. Do you guys want to play the night before in our practice facility? And uh, you know, a lot of these guys all played in high school, good players. Um, and it's actually pretty entertaining because typically the home team that hosts, you know, their their players are there, they're watching, cheering on their own guys. So it's almost like, you know, the tables are turned, uh, you know, when we were there, you know, you have Chris Dunn on the sidelines cheering you on as, as you're, you're playing in the manager game as opposed to him playing the next day. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. What was the, what was your favorite place to play? I guess the garden, am I assuming that right? That was uh, that was a unique experience. Uh, I always thought Marquette was a cool place to go. And uh, same with Creighton. Those two, when I was in school, were, um, you know, they would just come out with their new practice facility, which 
you know, in college basketball, it seems like an arms race at this mm-hmm. point. Um, and those were brand new and really cool to just see him playing. And you said you were around Providence when Chris Dunn was there. What made him special as a player? Uh, I think his mentality and just how he attacked every single practice, every single lift, um, you could see he was he was just unique with his approach. Um, he had a lot of obviously God-given talents in terms of his size, length, but uh, just his approach to everything. And he wanted to win every single segment in practice. Is he born with that? or Well, let me ask you this. Is that something you can instill in your players? That's something you're born with? What's your thoughts on that? Uh, I think with his case, he was just so unique with his upbringing, who he was. Um, probably something he was born with. But I think it was something able he, he was able to, um, you know, give to his teammates as well. You know, maybe they didn't have that that sense of, you know, intensity in him. But he was able to, you know, give it to him and um, reciprocate that type of energy. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so it was infectious. Yes. But have you figured out though, uh, in your years of coaching, how to instill that into a kid or can you, uh, you know, I think each kid is very unique and you got to understand them. Every, every player on your team needs to be individually understood. Um, you know, what makes, you know, one kid tick might not make another player. So, um, how can, you know, get to each guy on your team in their own way? Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, after being a manager for four years, you started working in the video department at Providence. Talk to me about your role there. Yeah. So, uh, it was kind of the perfect storm for me. Um, Ed had asked me if I wanted to come on in a full-time capacity as a special assistant and video coordinator. Um, and of course I accepted that position on, on the spot. Um, and then from there I, uh, helped him with a lot of his day-to-day stuff. And then I did a lot of, uh, you know, our scouting assisting with, our own personal breakdown of film um, and then assisting with the assistants uh, as well with scouts um, breaking down individual player film for guys um, recruiting film, et cetera. Gosh, what was the most challenging part of that job? That was probably when COVID hit, Um, you know, nobody had planned for something like that. And we just started building, you know, virtual tour official visits where, you know, you're touring a kid around campus and um, putting together different player edits based on their high school film um, and, you know, comparing them with the guys that we have on our own roster and just how, how do you, uh, how do you do a recruiting cycle without seeing the kids? Right. What was it? What was the pitch at Providence? Like when coach Cooley would say, Hey, you should come here and play for us. What was his elevator pitch? Yeah. Great question. Um, you know, it was, it depended on, uh, you know, player to player. He, uh, you know, he, he's from Providence, um, that sense of being home, his connection to the city to the school. Um, we built a $36 million practice facility when I was there. So that was obviously a big attraction to recruits. Um, and then playing in the big East is unlike any other conference, um, playing in Madison square garden, the history of the big East, um, being on Fox every night. It's, uh, it, it was, uh, it was special. Gotcha. Now you're in uh, Western reserve Academy now, which is located in Hudson, Ohio. And, uh, tell me how you ended up there. Yeah, so one of my closest friends is Pete Hutchins, who is uh, who is our athletic director here. Um, Pete was the head coach in New Hampton School for ten years and did a great job with that program and and built it into or helped build it into what it is today. Um, then Pete went on to Dartmouth College, and he and I stayed connected all throughout his tenure at Division One. Um, he did a small stint at George Mason as well, and then he came out here and took over the basketball program and uh, the athletic director position and recruited me to come out and build it with him. And uh, just being able to learn under him and his experience, um, particularly at, you know, these, these uh, boarding schools, it was, uh, it was an experience I was excited to, uh, to take on and a different challenge in my life I hadn't thought about. But I, uh, I think when you can do something like that with great people and great friends, it's, uh, it's something you don't want to pass up. Oh, absolutely. No, it's great. You followed Pete there and he, he, he got you on board. Uh, so, you know, when I talk to clients about Western reserve, one of the things they ask me about is well, it's not new England. So are college coaches going to be there? Are they going to play a, a, a new England type schedule? And I'm sure you hear this on a daily basis. So how do you answer those two questions? Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, the easiest thing is just the evidence. I mean, we've had almost a hundred college coaches on campus from division one, two, and three, just this past year. Um, it's we're 30 minutes from Cleveland. It's actually easier to get to than some of the schools in new England. Um, 
and then you're also, you know, attracting a, a different school um, where, you know, we get a lot of visits from big 10 schools, big 12 schools, um, regional schools in that sense. Um, but I don't think if you were to look at our schedule and, you know, the big buzzword these days is a national schedule. I mean, we played 39 games this year. And if you were to look at our schedule, we played teams from California to New Hampshire to Maine. Um, and we also play, you know, a, a very comparable schedule in terms of um, you know, like schools that are similar to us as well as some other schools. Gotcha. Like who, who are some of the schools you played this year? Just for people that want to know. Yeah. So we played, you know, New Hampton school, we played the Hill school, Phelps school, Blair Academy, the Hun school, um, SoCal Academy, Perky Omen. Um, so, you know, schools all across the country, similar to us, different from us. Yeah. And then when you get kids coming to your campus that, that want to play the schedule, I'm assuming all of them want to play D1. Right. At some level. Right. Um, what do you think, in your opinion, Matt, does it take to be a D1 guard? Yeah. You know, I think playing college basketball, whether it's one, two or three, it's it's a full time job. And that's something, you know, we try to convey to kids um, that regardless of level, you're making a commitment and it's going to be taxing on you, um, you know, academically in terms of athletically, socially. Um, but what it takes to be a division one guard is, you know, you have to have a relentless commitment to work. Um, you have to be committed to the game in the sense of, you know, film, how are you going getting better as a guard? Who are you watching? Are you competing at the highest level possible during the summers, during the springs? Um, or do you want to go against another, you know, division one level guard in practice every day, which is what we want in our gym. Mm -hmm. We want, you know, guys that want to play college basketball. We want division one caliber players in the gym going against one another, getting one another better, challenging one another. Gotcha. Love it. And then what has been your success on getting your, your players at the next level? Um, I think, you know, we've been successful because we've, uh, we're recruiting a certain type of kid, kids that want to be all in kids that have a blue collar mentality. Um, you know, our guys here, they live in the gym, they push one another. We have different shooting games in the off season that guys have to post weekly and it gives that sense of, you know, competition. Um, and then they take that with them, um, to college. We, we try to play, run it as much like a college program as we, as we can in terms of nutrition, lifting, skill development, how we run practice, offense, we run, how we play defense. Um, we want them to understand terminology. So when they step foot on a college campus, in uh, whether it's in June for summer school or whether it's in, you know, late August, early September. Um, we want them to feel comfortable that they're ready to have success there. Perfect. Perfect. Love it. Um, what's the biggest challenge of coaching at Western Reserve? Um, you know, I think you touched upon the location. I think uh, we aren't completely attached to a league. So I think there are challenges in that sense. People are like, oh, well, who do you play? Well, we play a lot of schools like us that are out east. We also have schools in our area that we play as well. Um, so there is a bit of travel, but um, we do attract a lot of schools to come out and play us here. Um, it's an easy place to get to. And uh, I would say that is probably the biggest challenge just the unknown out here. But, you know, if, if we had you take a parachute and jump out of a plane, you landed here in Hudson, you would think you're in Connecticut or Massachusetts. Yeah, for those who've not been there, Hudson's a very cute little town. I'm sure the moms, the parents would love it because um, it is cozy. It's right out the front gate of the school. And Western Reserve is like a New England prep school dropped in Northeast Ohio. So I, I tell that to all these people. And, you know, I think some of your buildings there are in the National uh, Register of Historic Places, too. So it's, uh, it's a fine campus. You got there, a fine town. And um, I notice a lot of my Midwestern clients really, like, perk up when I say, hey, I got a school in Ohio versus going all the way to New England too. So uh, do you do you get most of your kids from the, the Midwestern area or what's kind of the makeup of your of your of your players? You know, we we don't have uh we're not primarily Midwest. Um we have kids from all over from you know Finland, Serbia, New York, Maryland, Australia, Texas, Canada, uh Ohio, Indiana. So I think uh, you know, we cast a wide net when we're we're trying to build our roster. And uh we do have a lot of Midwest ties, but we have kids from kind of all over the country, all over the world as well. Gotcha. I love that because then it's a multicultural team you've got. And then uh, you know, everyone learns something else from from other everyone else's experience. So to me, that is uh that's better than just having a class of kids from one area, which you can find sometimes in New England, you know, with Connecticut kids, right? Absolutely. 
Uh, what's your ultimate goal while you're at Western Reserve? Like, yeah, what would you, what was think, it? What's uh, the ideal if you could get it to you know the dream state? Yeah, I think that's something you know Pete and I talk about all the time together. You know, what what do we want this program to be? And I I think we want it to be the best you know basketball program in the country with you know real academics that um as you know like like most of these schools they're not we're not a pop-up school we're more of a traditional boarding school um and we want to be you know the best basketball program with the highest academics we can be gotcha uh, just for those listening uh, that's a facetime call from my father big mike uh, from australia so <laughs> we'll be getting on that call here shortly after the podcast uh, so sorry about that that sounds great. I love that goal. I think you guys can achieve it, and you're getting very close to it now. So, so keep that up. Uh, now we're gonna finish here with a couple quick hitters. All right. When you were manager at Providence, what was the biggest win? Or even as an assistant coach there too, what was your biggest win as a program? Uh, in 2016, we won an NCAA tournament game at the buzzer against USC. Um, that was a big one. Then in 2014, we won the Big East Championship uh, at Madison Square Garden over Creighton. So. Um, probably the biggest championship over over the NCAA tournament one. Gotcha. What about your biggest win at Western Reserve? Um, we had a couple big wins this year. I think uh, it's probably one of three. We uh, we hosted Perky Omen in early February here, um, and we played them really close, uh, and we ended up edging them out by about seven. That was a really really great game. Um, I've had a couple college coaches I sent that out to and said that's as close to a college game as they've seen. Um, and then we also played in the fly into the hoop in uh, Dayton, Ohio this year. And we beat SoCal Academy and, you know, a back and forth battle against uh, they had about three five star players and we ended up beating them by three. And what was a, uh, a really strategic, uh, you know, X's and O's game. And I think defensively it was the best we played all year. So either one of those. Gotcha. How about the best player you've coached against at Providence who you saw on the other team and then same for Western Reserve? Oh, wow. Um, when I was at Providence, it was probably Doug McDermott. Um, yeah. You know, his ability to score the ball um, at all three levels was just unbelievable. And you can only hope to slow him down, not stop him. Um, in terms of the best player we we have coached against here, last year we played a, a school out of Colorado, Um the player's name was Bayan Dongo. He's going to Rutgers. I thought his ability to impact the game on the defensive end of the floor was something I hadn't uh, I hadn't seen at the high school level for sure. His ability to switch five ways, um, protect the rim, guard for you know ninety four feet. It was uh, it was very impressive. Nice. How about your favorite movie of all time? Uh, favorite movie, great. Probably Caddyshack. I'm oh. a big golfer, so I like Caddyshack. Well, even if you don't golf, that's still a great comedy. <laughs> and, and lastly so i was gonna ask you hobbies i'm guessing uh when you're not coaching it's it's golf is there anything else you do uh, i like to golf i like to ski um i don't get uh the, the uh, luxury of being in the mountains like you unfortunately but um when i can i like to ski golf uh i've recently picked up pickleball a little bit with uh with some of my friends so just being outside that's a good thing no oh, perfect matt is there anything we did not discuss today you want to make sure you share with those listening you know, I think you touched upon uh, the uniqueness to uh, the town of Hudson and Western Reserve Academy. Um, something that's very unique to us is we're adjacent to the downtown. The downtown is open to our students, whether they have a free period after school, they want to go down and grab ice cream, grab a burger, hang out with friends. It's a it's an open part of campus. There's two grocery stores down there. You can get a haircut. So it's a uh, it's definitely a plus for us is. You're not just kind of going away to prep school and it's it's the only place you can go. You also have a sense of community um, and you can kind of get off campus and you're not just some kids might feel trapped. But this is a uh, this is a unique experience. Yeah, I concur. It absolutely has that. Where can people find you online, man? Uh, you can find me. I'm on Twitter. Uh, I am not on Instagram. I am one of three active people on the team's Instagram page. So um, you can find me on Twitter or Instagram and always on my cell. Yeah. And we'll link uh, show notes to uh, those links uh, after this episode. But uh, Matt, thank you so much for joining the Prep Athletics Podcast today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Corey. I appreciate it. Yeah, and if you guys like this, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe uh, on your favorite podcasting platform, and all the information you want to know about prep schools is located on our website, prepathletics.com. Thanks so much to Matt Garvey, one of the coaches at Western Reserve Academy. 
And uh, we'll see you all next time on the Prep Athletics Podcast. Take care.